The topic, Jadavian Clowney. The question, should he change positions? Let's just get into it. Okay, so I know that the thesis of this video is going to make people think I'm crazy, uh, but just hear me out. Uh, let me try to g give my explanation, and then you can t uh, tell me why I'm an idiot in the comments. Uh, that's all I ask. Uh, one of the things that I, I get frustrated about with Clowney will be shown on a play like this. I've seen him plenty of times line up as an edge rusher, going up against a tackle, and just do this, where you see right when the ball is snapped. I don't even know really what exactly he's trying to do. It looked like he would maybe try to hit the... Uh, Bengals arms out of the way, uh, Bengals offensive lineman's arms out of the way, but he just, if he, if that's what he was trying to do, he whiffed horribly, uh, and, and there's so many examples of this where when he tries, he'll run up without even really trying a move in general, or the move he will try will be very poorly executed, and at this point, I mean, you look at that Cincinnati player, he has both hands exactly where he wants, and Clowney has no hands on his offensive lineman that he's trying to push out of the way, which, uh, is not the best. This causes Clowney to just get taken out of the play and you know eventually there was help from a guard but you know the tackle didn't need it and again uh, I know Cincinnati's offensive line is the best that there ever was but uh, you, you still don't want that to happen obviously I'm joking about th that uh, you know it, it's it's not a good thing I think I think uh, there's a reason why he only had three sacks last year and I don't know if he's the best from the edge now people are going to say you can't use sacks as the honest measurement uh, and I agree with that I think that it's Clowney still has a ton of value. I'm not trying to say a Clowney is a bad player or a bad edge rusher, but I just think that if he played five tech instead of playing six or seven tech, he's going to add so much more value. You put someone else to the outside of him and he can add a ton of value. And I think that that's where I think Clowney would actually be a better fit. He's a monster in the running game. So you don't have to worry about that. Like on this play, there's three one-on-one -on -one matchups on the right side of the screen. Uh, the matchup that's in the black circle there, that's Clowney's matchup. Going up one-on-one -on -one against the left tackle. Uh, so this is the not always an easy matchup to win. But if you notice what he does right when his ball is snapped, is he's able to push that tackle further back, which is putting the line of scrimmage backwards. Now, the flip side is there still is uh, some sort of a gap right here where uh, the running back might be able to make a play. 56 is doing a good job of staying to the outside, which is going to force the back to move uh, you know, into the gap where Clowney can then try to make a play. But also, watch how Clowney is able to just get his hands out. He's able to, you know, grab on. And because he has those just, you know, long arms, he's able to make that play. This is another example of what he can do. Where, again, three one-on-one -on -one matchups, that's where Clowney is. Again, he's not the edge guy on this play. Uh, and what's going to happen is, at least that's not where he's lined up. And what's going to happen is that right when the ball is snapped, uh, you're going to notice that he's able to push the guard pretty significantly far back, which is moving the line of scrimmage backwards. Now, again, there's two gaps on either side where the back could decide to run through. But again, this is the kind of thing with, for Clowney where he knows he can get off and make a play very well, and he's one of the best two gappers in the league. And what two gapping is, is exactly what you see, where basically whichever gap the back tries to run through, Clowney can reach off, grab him, and make a play. Clowney is able to do that. He's able to make a quick tackle. They gain a couple yards, but nothing major. Uh, he's a really good run defender. He's one of the best rushing defenders in the NFL uh, as an edge rusher. Uh, but I think that's because I don't think he's a natural edge rusher. I really don't. I don't really know what it is exactly. You'd think he would have all the tools to be a fantastic edge rusher. But at the end of the day, you know, people like to talk about how with Clowney, a lot of his pressure, you know, he gets a lot of pressures. He's, you know, screws up the play a lot. So, yes, maybe uh, he's not actually getting the sacks, but he's still adding tremendous value. Uh, and that is true. Like, I'm not trying to deny that. But I also think he would add more value from the inside. Even most of the time that he is able to be a disruptor, it's by him using moves that would still work against the guard. Like this play, uh, again, going up one-on-one -on -one against the tackle. And what he's going to do here is he's just going to go full bull rush, you know? He just grabs on, puts his head down, and pushes. It works too. Clowney's a strong guy. Clowney's really strong. He's one of the strongest players in the NFL. So he's easily able to push that tackle far enough back that at this point, Rudolph has no choice but to try and just run for some yards. There actually is some opening up the middle. He's able to gain a little bit of yards. Uh, but, you know, that's not really uh, Clowney's fault. That was more the interior defensive line. That was a good play from Clowney. But again, like I say, 
that was a good play, but it would work uh, a, a, if even if he was going up against a guard. I also should probably be a little bit more clear on that. I don't think he should never take a snap from an edge position again. I just think he, you know, if I were to sign him next year, I would sign him with the idea that he's going to be a lot more of a guy who plays five tech. I think that's just more of a natural position for him, even though his body type doesn't necessarily make you think that that's what he would do. Uh, at the same time, I mean, he still is, uh, you know, 266 pounds. Uh, so, you know, he's maybe a little bit small for that, but like Aaron Donald's 280. So, you know, he, he can gain 20 pounds and be a beast play in the middle. And Aaron Donald just plays straight up. You know, he plays three tack. He, he just plays straight up defensive tackle, which I'm not asking Clowney to do necessarily. It's very rare that I'll see Clowney use his footwork to get a pressure. It happens very rare. I'm not saying it doesn't happen. Uh, this play is a good example where uh, he's going up one-on-one -on -one against a right tackle. He's going to use footwork to uh, get around, where he's going to sort of fake his those going to the outside, makes one quick move to the inside, and watch how well it works. He's able to swipe the left hand away, gets pressure relatively quickly. But again, that play, while it looked so great, and people are going to say I'm nitpicking here, it took him over three and a half seconds to actually make contact with Jimmy Garoppolo. So when your best footwork move of the season is still taking you over three and a half seconds to actually make the play, uh, you know, again, that's quick pressure, but it's not fantastic pressure. It really isn't. And if I have to figure out one thing that he is kind of missing and one reason why he, you know, he passes the eye test so much and yet he doesn't actually, you know, get stats on the stat sheet is because of things like that. When he does make, I think it's his footwork. I think this footwork and lack of explosiveness. I mean, despite the fact that this guy ran under a 2.5 40-yard dash, uh, he, 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 just, he doesn't look as explosive off the line as some of these other guys. He really doesn't. And that's not necessarily speed. That's sort of just acceleration and footwork. And I'm not saying he doesn't have his moments. He does have his moments. In fact, that's one of the biggest problems with Clowney is that when he has a great play, it looks amazing. He's one of those, when he looks good, he looks great. But at the end of the day, you can't just pay somebody off of uh, when they, what they do you know, how many highlight real level plays do they make? You have to pay them off of what the actual value they're bringing to your team is. And the value he's bringing to a team is way less than $20 million. It just is, especially as an edge rusher. I think he could add a lot more value as a five tech. And again, you know, he, he had one sack where he straight up beat a, a tackle last year. It was this play. This is the only time he straight up beat a tackle. And, you know, for a sack, obviously, he beat them for pressures. I just showed a play where he did that. But uh, for a sack, this is the only time he ever did it. Uh, and watch what he's going to do. Is he going to do something fancy? Nope, just bull rush. You know, gets his hands on, pushes, eventually is able to get close enough where he can reach out and make a tackle and knock the ball out. Uh, you know, good play, really good play. But again, I just, I can't help, but I can't help the feeling, but think that if he was going up against the guard, he would still be able to do that. And you could now add an extra edge rusher who maybe relies on footwork and speed and explosiveness more. And now you can kind of have three guys who can consistently rush the passer. We've seen this uh, with, you know, someone like DeForest Buckner. And Buckner is, you know, he's only 20 pounds heavier than Clowney, and he's two inches taller. So uh, the idea that, like, you know, Clowney's not a small guy. I think he could play that position. I think he's big enough to do it. Uh, I, I kind of think that would actually naturally fit him better, and we would have, you know, a team would probably be more willing to do it. I think the problem is that I don't think Clowney wants to do that because you're not going to get as many uh, pressures when you're playing from the inside, even though I think he would actually be adding more value. I don't know if he would get as big of a contract. So if he's taking a one-year prove-it deal, which I think is seeming like that's going to be the likely option, uh, he's probably going to take a one-year prove-it deal uh, and just want to be an edge rusher and want to be in a position where he can get as many sacks to try and prove himself. But at the same time, I, I think that he actually would be a really good five-tack. Uh, what do you guys think? I think it's an interesting thing to talk about. Uh, I hope you guys didn't just write off my, uh, you know, uh, sort of a little bit out there theory right at the beginning. But uh, I think it's interesting. Uh, I really do think that he could be successful, uh, you know, f more from the inside. So what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from you. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.